So tap water in the United Kingdom is safe to drink. However, there are a whole host of chemicals that do occur in tap water. Um, it's been reported that up to 60,000 different, different chemicals can be found in, and identified from tap water. The specific things that we're worried about in the United Kingdom, for example, are heavy metals. Many of the pipe works in the United Kingdom uh, are still got lead pipes, and so you can get large amounts of lead in the water. There is about I suppose a third of the area of London, if you look at the Thames Water Authority's own report, shows about a third of the area of London have still got lead levels in their pipes which are greater than the, uh, than the UK and the EU recommended levels of lead. So, so heavy metal contaminants are one thing. Then there are, um, obviously our waters come particularly from rivers and so forth where you have runoff from the, from the land and the runoff particularly we're thinking about are the fertilizers, the nitrate fertilizers. Um, and then there are a whole group of other chemicals that, in, that come into our water from things that we've flushed down the lavatory. So for example, all the, um, uh, all the organic type of medications that you might take, so things like the combined oral contraceptive pill and so forth, we're seeing that the concentrations of those types of chemicals and, and other, other medications are increasing in tap water. The real concerns about some of these things, so obviously heavy metals, the concerns are, are around things like um, fetal development. So when you're taking about a, a pregnant lady, what you don't want is to have exposure to heavy metals because it affects the, particularly the brain development in, in, the, in the growing fetus, and that can be very dangerous. Um, and then the other chemicals, one of the major effects that they have are, they're called what we call endocrine disturbers. So they have an estrogenic often action in the body and they're increasingly uh, the sort of the estrogenic load in the body. Now that's not good for men or for women. Uh, men obviously have a higher level of testosterone to estrogen in the body and the um, and there has been reported over the course of the last 30 years a significant fall in, for example, the sperm count in men. That's been thirded since I was a medical student. So when I was a medical student, a normal sperm count was 60 million sperm per mil, and today that is closer to 20 million per sperm per mil as, a, as normality. So there's been a big fall in the sperm count. Why? There hasn't been a change in the genetics and so forth. So, so what's been the driver? And we, we, we believe it's environmental pollution. And an estrogenic action, if you give men large amounts of estrogens, you will reduce their sperm count. For women, the effect is, is not so much at that end of the spectrum, it's more uh, to do with, with cancers. So breast cancer, for example, which is, uh, which is um, increasing in its um, incidence, is, we know is driven in many cases by estrogen exposure. So if you're overweight and you have a greater estrogen level internally, you're at greater risk of breast cancer. If you're, con if you're consuming external estrogens all the time, a greater risk of, uh, potentially greater risk of breast cancer. And I think the other thing that may be changing for girls is puberty as well. Puberty is coming forward and, and again, people worry that these sorts of contaminants may be having endocrine disturbing effects within the human body.